G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for a video today taking a look at the upcoming finals race as we approach the final third of the season. There's nine games left as I record this and it does feel like there is a hugely open finals race when you consider the teams from about fifth all the way down to about 14th. There's still mathematically a chance and at times have all shown compelling form that could just give you enough reason to think this side could get pretty far this season. Equally, by the same token though, they've all shown at some points some horrendous form that's made us doubt it, which makes this finals race in particular quite intriguing and that's what we're going to talk about today in today's video. So I've recently done my power rankings and in that video I suggested that we have a clear top four of teams that I think are pretty much certain to make finals, but after that there is absolutely no certainty that any of these teams will make finals. Those four teams that I'll lock in for finals will be Collingwood and Port of course and the Brisbane Lions and Melbourne as well. Conversely there's a bottom four who I think are uh, of just about ready to be ruled out of finals. Obviously, uh, West Coast might make a late charge, who knows? But uh, between West Coast and North Melbourne, uh, Carlton and Hawthorne are the other two teams that I'll absolutely rule out at this point of the season. But everyone in between that has at least a small chance, and we're gonna go through the 10 teams through the middle of the ladder that could somehow, with some luck, make finals. So if you're good at math, you would have just worked out that we're talking about 10 teams who have to squeeze into four remaining spots. And in today's video, I'm gonna go through all of those 10 teams, talk a little bit about their run home, what they've proven so far, to what extent uh, I think that they will make the finals, and in the end, offer you the four teams that I think will make finals. As always, guys, the True Footy YouTube channel is sponsored by manscaped.com. If you have any male grooming needs, which you do if you're a young man, and my analytics suggest that about 94% of you are male, and about 75% of you are between 18 and 35, that means that you probably need to consider manscaping. Now, manscaping is not something that everyone needs to do per se, but it is something I've done since I was about 15 years old. If you are a ball shaver, if you are a chest shaver like myself, even if you have little things like, uh, you know, your nose hairs and your ear hairs get a little bit out of whack, they've got some great products for you to attend to those needs. There's the Weed Whacker specifically, which is a great little tool for getting into those little crevices. By crevices, I should clarify, I mean your nose and your ears. Like God, please don't misconstrue that. But on top of that, the Lawnmower 4.0 is also the body hair trimmer they have, and it is fantastic. Ceramic bladed to reduce grooming accidents, uh, and it's also waterproof. It's got a little LED light so you can see what you're doing, and it has a 90 minute battery run time as well, which is super handy. On top of that, they've got, you know, ball moisturizers, ball deodorants, they've got normal deodorant, uh, and they've got cologne as well, and I'm a big cologne guy at this point in my life. So if there's anything that tickles your fancy on the Manscaped website, make sure you use the code TRUEFOOTY20 all caps, all one word, and you get 20% off and free shipping on these great products. So please, on behalf of True Footy, enjoy that discount. So we're gonna crack into this final race, talking about uh, the 10 teams that I think are a chance to play finals this year, and to illustrate the closeness of this, between 5th and 14th, there is only two wins separating those teams. Between 7th and 14th, there is only one win. So genuinely, a pretty even contest here, and there's going to be a huge, importance on the run home in terms of fixtures for each of these teams, which we will go through in this video. So I'm gonna go from first to 10th in terms of the current uh, order of the ladder, and at the end I'll tell you what my prediction is. So we are gonna start with St Kilda, who are fifth on the ladder with eight and six. Their form has dropped in recent weeks, losing three of their last five, and it remains to be seen whether this is a mid-season form slump or is it, if it is a reminiscent of you know last year where they fell away completely. But in terms of their fixture, they've got three tough games ahead of them. They've got the Ds, they've got the Cats at Marvel, and they've got the Lions away. So those are the three games that I think they will find very, very tough to win. They've got some sure things, uh, you know, West Coast in Perth, that's an absolute bankable four points at the moment. They've got another game against the Hawks, and you wouldn't say that that is a sure thing at all, but we're gonna class this as a, a winnable game. They should, in theory, get some revenge over the Hawks. Uh, they've got Carlton, and then they've got some 50-50 games against uh, the Suns away, North and Richmond as well. So a bit of a mixed bag in terms of fixture, those three genuine tough uh, games that I would be shocked if they won any of them. But what we need to see from St Kilda is them to click into that high pressure really strong defensive sort of game style that we saw in the first couple of months of this season. They've started to get some forward back, Max King's into the side. Injuries have played a part, but St Kilda should be considering themselves a good chance to play finals this year. Next, we have Essendon, who are six on the ladder currently with a record of eight and six. 
They were on a pretty good run of form. They've kind of done their season in blocks this year. They had a losing streak when it was a tough fixture. They've had a relatively easy run of fixtures recently. They've beaten some average teams in, you know, Carlton, North Melbourne, West Coast, and Richmond in that time as well. And that was brought to an end by a recent average loss, I would say, by their own standards to Fremantle in Perth. But they've got a pretty tough fixture in terms of the run home. They've got the power, they've got the cats at GMHBA, the dogs and the pies. So tough to see them winning any of those. If they do snag one of those, it will seriously boost their finals chances. They do have West Coast and North Melbourne to come in the run home. And then some 50-50 games, you know, Adelaide at Marvel Stadium coming up will be probably a pivotal one for both of those sides and one that I'm really intrigued to watch. They've got Sydney at Marvel Stadium and they've got a trip to see the Giants in Sydney as well. So you probably give them two should wins in West Coast and North, but some of those 50-50 games are generally winnable and especially that game against the Crows, they could be competing for the same spot in the eight. Then we've got the Western Bulldogs who are currently seventh um, and despite a pretty reasonable start to the year, they've dropped off in form in the last month or so, losing three of their last four against the Suns, the Cats, and the Power. Admittedly, uh, the Cats and the Power are pretty tough opponents. They've also beaten the Ruse and Adelaide as well. That was a particularly good win. So from this point in the season, they've got three really tough games against the Pies, the Swans away, and the Cats at GMHBA. But knowing the Bulldogs and knowing the gear that they can lift to, I give them a reasonable chance of winning some of those tough games as well, particularly uh, against Collingwood at Marvel Stadium as opposed to the MCG. But I do think they have got several wins where I would probably be tipping them um, this far out. So we've got Fremantle this week at Marvel. Again, a very pivotal one against another side that could potentially make finals. They've got GWS at home. They've got Richmond. They've got the Hawks in Tassie. And they've got West Coast coming up as well. So out of the three teams I've talked about so far, they have the most examples of games where they should win them. And therefore, the Dogs making the finals does seem very likely at this point. Point. Then we're going to talk about the Crows who are currently 8th on the ladder and at times have shown form that would far exceed the quality of a team you expect to be 8th. Uh, but they've been a little bit shaky on the road this year. They've had a huge win over West Coast recently, uh, which showed the firepower of that side. And up until Sydney's win over West Coast, that was the highest score of any team this year. And they beat the Lions, which I thought was a good demonstration of how far this side has come. And even more so, or perhaps to the same extent, their performance against Collingwood at the MCG, one of the biggest, uh, toughest asks for a young developing side. They nearly won the game. They've got three of the toughest games uh, possible coming up with the Demons uh, away from home. They've got the Lions at the Gabba and they've got another showdown to consider as well. And while they did win the first showdown, I think we've seen a very different Port Adelaide since then. That being said, there's a relatively easy run of fixtures coming up. They do have both North and West Coast coming up in their fixture. And then they've got the two expansion sides, which can be tricky propositions for them. Both the Giants in recent times have shown an ability to beat Adelaide and the Suns also already beat them this year, but they will be playing that game at Adelaide Oval. A couple of 50-50 ones. Again, that game against Essendon coming up against at Marvel Stadium could be an eight-point game. Maybe one of those sides makes finals, probably not both. And then the Swans in Sydney as well could be a tough ask. Then we'll talk about the reigning premiers who are currently ninth on the ladder uh, with seven and seven and been pretty Jekyll and Hyde this year at times reaching their top form I think back to that 93 point win over Sydney where they just look fantastic They've recently beaten the Demons and the Dogs uh, But in that time also had a particularly poor loss against the Giants at home at GMHBA Stadium So their toughest games remaining this season. They do have the Lions at the Gabba They've got the power at uh, GMHBA and they have the Pies at the MCG but the difference with Geelong is because We've sort of come to trust them a little bit, obviously being a strong team for many years. You've kind of got to give them a reasonable chance in all of those tough fixtures. And that's what I think is the difference between Geelong and a lot of these other contenders is a belief, in, at least in my opinion, that they will power through and finish the season strong. It might not be enough to be a genuine contender this year, but you'd be a silly man to tip against them to make the finals this year. They've also got a run of games at GMHBA uh, against North, Essendon, Fremantle, and the Dogs. And of course, they could drop those, particularly, you know, Fremantle beat them there last year. And the Dogs, I think, have at least gotten close in recent times. But that being said, with the firepower that Geelong have, I'd be very surprised if we don't see them flick a switch in the back end of this year. Then we got the Gold Coast Suns, who we have to include in this conversation, although between you and me, it's still a little bit hard to back in a team that has never actually played finals before, but they're currently sitting 10th, and they've won three of their last five with some reasonable form against the Hawks, Crows, and Dogs. So particularly the, the Crows and the Dogs win, 
do suggest there is growth here from the Gold Coast Suns. The tough thing will be expecting them to translate that form into the strong back end of the year and really push for finals. They do have a tough fixture as well. Uh, when you consider they got the Pies, Port, and Lions still to come. And then the Crows and the Swans, again, are very, very tricky opponents. They do have a knack of beating the Swans, but early this year, they got absolutely rolled by them. The two easiest games for the rest of the year are probably North in Tassie, uh, but that being in Tasmania also makes it a little bit of a tricky proposition because North can be tricky to beat down there, even though they're not great at the moment. And then they've got the Blues up at uh, Metricon Stadium, or which is now called Heritage Bank. But when the Blues just beat them by 10 goals recently, that suddenly looks a lot less of a sure thing. For me, on the strength of fixture, it's very, very hard to back in the Gold Coast Suns, particularly when you factor in I just can't trust them yet. Then we'll talk about the Fremantle Dockers, who are one of the more interesting teams to try and assess at the moment because their form, you know, similar to Geelong, has been a real mixed bag, particularly recently. They've had three good wins over the Demons, Cats, and the Dons in Perth most recently. They had a big loss to the Giants and a home loss to Richmond. Neither of those results I certainly didn't see coming anyway. What I see here is a tough fixture, but... Fremantle has shown an ability to bob up and beat quality teams when you don't expect it. So looking at their four toughest games, they have all of the dogs away, the pies away, the cats away, and the power in Perth. So like I said, they beat the cats away from home last year. The pies will be a tricky proposition for them, but in recent times, I don't think it was that long ago, they did beat the pies at the MCG. And their game against the power at Optus Stadium, you know, the power are currently a comfortably better side, but it is a home game for Fremantle and with that home crowd, they are always a chance. There's also a home game against the Lions to consider as well, which you'd give them a chance in. So what I'm really doing here is sitting on the fence a little bit with Fremantle because if they flick a switch and we see some of the form that we've seen them at their best this year, then they should make finals. But on the strength of fixture, they do have a relatively tough fixture. And uh, if they have any more drop-offs this year, they're probably going to rule themselves out for finals. Then there's Richmond, who are bizarrely still a chance for finals. They were flagging badly recently, and they've won three on the bounce versus St. Kilda. Fremantle and GWS and they're now 12th on the ladder so still realistically a chance when you consider how tight that middle part of the ladder is and we've seen a clear improvement under McWalter and uh, an ability to win close games as I've talked about previously. The toughest fixtures are they've got the Lions at the Gabba they do have another game against Melbourne and they have Port in Adelaide as well but like Fremantle and like Geelong you do have a sense that Richmond could be really, really tough against some of these opponents and actually win some games you don't expect them to. They've also got three, you know, pretty winnable games against the, probably the three or f three of the f bottom four sides of the competition on form. They've got a game against the Eagles in Perth. They've got the Hawks and they've got North Melbourne as well. So three games you'd think they should win. And then a host of 50-50 games. They've got the Saints again, who they beat recently. They got the Dogs and they lost that game by three points earlier this year. And they got the Swans at the MCG and the Swans in particular are a very hard team to read right now. So again, it's kind of in Richmond's court here, but you have to give them a reasonable chance of playing finals if they continue this resurgence of form. But what we will say is they can't really afford too many slip ups. If they lose a winnable game from here, it's probably going to be very tough for them. Then you've got the Swans who again, bizarrely are a chance to play finals. And I think partly why we consider the Swans a chance to play finals is because of the strength that we know they've had in previous times. We know their injury hit, but on their best, they are a damaging side as West Coast learned the hard way on the weekend. But they're currently 13th. And uh, most importantly, they had something like a 14% percentage boost in their last game against West Coast. Their three wins in that time have been against North, the Blues, and as, as I said, the Eagles, and they've lost to Brisbane and St. Kilda. So not a hugely compelling run of form there, but like these other teams I mentioned, Fremantle, Richmond, and Geelong, they've shown an ability to be a tough opponent um, on any day. So it doesn't really matter if they're playing you know, Geelong hypothetically in GMHBA. If they've got a game against Richmond at the G. You always give this one side a chance, and they do have the Cats, Dockers, Crows, and Demons in their final four, but like I said, Got to give them a chance in all of those games. They've got another uh, derby against the Giants, and they did lose that one earlier this year, but that one will be pivotal as well for their chances. Then you've got the Giants winning 14th uh, with 6 and 8, and it's only because of their improved form recently that you give them a slight sniff of playing finals, and specifically the 70-point win against Fremantle and that big win against the Cats at GMHBA Stadium. So we know there's a side under there, and because it's a new coach, sometimes when teams start to gel under a particular coach, they hit a run of form and they never turn it around. And that could be the case here with the Giants. What we do see with them though is a tough run of fixtures coming home. They've got the D's 
uh, in Darwin, I believe. They got the Crows away, they got the Dogs away, and Port Adelaide away. So those will be tough games for them. You wouldn't say it's a locked-in win, but the the game, the one game where they start absolute favourites would probably be against the Hawks in Sydney. And again, the Hawks are unpredictable. We do see a run of 50-50 games. The Sydney derby that I mentioned before, they've got the Suns at Monaco, and Monaco is a ground that they're typically weak at, or at least in recent times. They got the Dons in Sydney, and they've got the Blues in Melbourne as well. So I'm including them in this analysis as a a sign of respect to the, the form they've shown, but in my analysis, based on their run home, it's going to be very, very tough for the Giants. So what I've done is I've run through the uh, ladder predictor to end the season, and uh, these aren't worth much, but I thought I'd tie up the, uh, the analysis here with my actual prediction based on the remaining fixtures, who I think will play final. So I'll get it up here. I've got Geelong in fifth, and a lot of that is largely due to the fact that I just trust them to power through in the second half of the year. Uh, then the Bulldogs, similarly, again, I expect them to lift, and in terms of the strength of their fixture, I think it's very, very likely they play finals. The same goes for St Kilda as well, because I think that they run home in terms of fixtures, and a little bit of a belief that we'll see them not slump again this year. They'll scrape in with 13 wins, and it's really, really tough because there's four teams there between 8th and 11th uh, who are pretty much just separated by percentage. And on percentage, I give that to the Adelaide Crows, obviously, because uh, of their ability to score big. And I think they've really taken steps and are probably the best contender out of all the remaining teams there. So Sydney, Essendon and Fremantle lose out with Fremantle. Again, I think they've got a tough fixture, a lot of 50-50 tough games there. And uh, at the moment, I don't back them in. But I am a biased Eagles fan, so obviously it's just that I hate Fremantle. Anyway, guys, that is my analysis of the run home, but it's very subjective, very arbitrary at the moment. Let me know in the comments what you think of, uh, I guess, my predictions, but also who were the teams that you think are locked in for a start to play finals, and then who would you think will make up that fifth to eighth spot? As always, guys, I really appreciate your support on this channel. Make sure you hit subscribe if you are enjoying the content. It would be much appreciated for the growth of this channel, uh, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching.